Hi there. Self-worth, self-esteem, self-compassion, um, self-love, self-confidence. We all know these words, but what do they really mean? What do they contain? Do we understand them? And what does this meaning hold for us? How can we tap into and own the meaning behind these words, these concepts? Self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-love. I'm Emma Rowena. I'm a musician and a performer, and I am an intuitive reader and healer. And I welcome you here today. Uh, this is um, a series of live videos that I, I've, I'm doing, I decided to do, um, to share some thoughts and experiences that I have uh, about this thing called being human. Um, which I find um, at times um, intense at uh, best, uh, or at worst maybe, uh, whichever way you want to put it, intensely um, challenging at times, intensely beautiful at times, um, and sometimes intensely distant or non-intense, if you like, not intense, I'm making up words here. Anyway, so this um, Monday morning, as I usually do, I bring up a topic, I share some thoughts, I share some experiences, I invite you to consider these concepts. And then on Wednesdays, I talk about um, a little bit more closely about how you can start to break through whatever it is that's blocking you or healing you, um, stopping you from healing in this area. And then Fridays, I invite you to um, a, a full meditation, a guided meditation or visualization, I would say. Um, where we center around this topic, but maybe a little bit in a more um, universal and, and um, well, intuitive way, because I tap into the moment and to the, to the people that either join me live or that will listen to it later. So I welcome you. And um, yes, today it's week two of what I call healy, the healing topic. Um, and last week I talked about healing the victim. And this week, we're going to talk about self-worth. And my son saw the title. He's 15 and he's always got all these questions and he's very, very sort of, he tries to understand and find the, the, the get to the core of things and he doesn't give up usually. Um, it's, it's very, very exciting, but also quite challenging sometimes to be sort of put on the spot like that. And he asked me, okay, what does that mean? Healing the self-worth. And um, and I was I had to think about it. Well, I didn't think about it then because he sort of answered himself. I well, I answered that you know it has to do with being well, self confidence and trying to restore your self confidence and your um, sense of being worthy. And he said, well, oh, and I have to <laughs> say I was very appreciative. He said, I don't really relate to that because I I kind of feel worthy. Um, which um, made me feel very, very happy, of course, as a mother, that your child actually feels this self-worth in him or herself. That's not a given. And there are many things, many reasons this can or cannot become a part of you or have become a part of you. There can be uh, stories, excuse me, in the past, maybe when you grow up where um, your parents, um, are unable to show their love because they have their own wounds. I have, I was loved as a child, obviously. I mean, yes, I was, I know, I realized, but they also, my parents had their own wounds that they carried with them. And sometimes maybe I couldn't quite connect to what they felt, the, the love that they felt. That's just a reality. And so, um, but there were also other experiences. So I, I spent a lot of my life not feeling uh, worthy. And I realized after my, um, my big breakup a few years ago that I've mentioned in some of these videos, because it was sort of the starting point of my shift, um, I felt completely worthless. And I was attacking myself and I had done everything wrong and I was going on. And I realized later that actually this only, 
it was only an expansion or an enhancing of the not being worthy that I was carrying even through this relationship, which of course makes a relationship quite a relationship quite tricky because if you are in a relationship feeling unworthy, then you're going to be looking for signs either of proof that you are worthy in from the other person or proof that you're right, you're not worthy from the other person. In either way, you're putting all the responsibility on another person rather than mm, healing yourself. And uh, it's, it's quite natural, especially if you've lost your sense of worth or sense of esteem and self-love somewhere along the way, it can be quite difficult to find this on your own. And it can be quite tricky to be on your own in, in working to allow it to expand in you, this sense of, I'm worthy, I'm worth something. And especially if you're very alone, if you're very lonely and if you don't have a lot of people around you, feeling, you won't even feel that you're worth something to somebody else maybe. Well, you are, but this feeling is very, very tricky to to find if if there no, there's no proof out there of it. The proof is actually in ourselves and that's the tricky thing as well. Or I keep saying tricky in this video, but I remember somebody told me, well, you'll, you know, you can't find that true love uh, un until you love yourself. And I went, Bleh. I don't want to hear it. I didn't want to hear that. I wanted to, I wanted to be saved. And essentially that's what a lot of us walk around doing. We want somebody else to save us. And uh, it can maybe work for a little while. And I think maybe the best way another person could save you was to put up a mirror um, to, to your face and show you what you are, but also what it is in you that stops you from seeing what you are, yourself. And when I say what you are, is your, um, your worth, your essence, your beauty. And you can have somebody tell you that all the time, but if you carry this disbelief or this this um, self-loathing as, as I did or or um, you do not trust what other people you, you cannot trust that this can be a truth then they can say it as much as they like in the end it's going to crack and in the end you're going to start craving things from another person craving that they see you craving that they hold you whatever and when you can't even hold yourself and so um I'm sort of here sharing this uh, in the hope that maybe I reach through to some of you in, in trying to start to discover your own uniqueness and your own beauty and, and also maybe encouraging you to, to seek some help or to connect to people in order to, um, to sh put that mirror up for yourself um, so that you can start to investigate who you truly are and who you can be. And imagine this. This came to me, I went for a walk, um, and walking, by the way, uh, moving. Uh, to me, it's a very, very powerful tool for, for um, exploring perspectives, because when you move, your thoughts move. Of course, they can start spinning, but that's a different matter. I'm not, uh, I mean, that's, that's something that we, you can sort of look at separately as well, but it also has to do with your, with your mind taking over rather than um, exploring and your analytical sense maybe and our we're so used to analyzing and trying to make sense and controlling things that we lose the exploration we lose the discovery the the uh, curiosity in ourselves so but, but if you start walking and if you try sort of walking or moving around with the intention of exploring then actually um, things start, very interesting things start to, to happen. And um, so th that's one thing you can do. You can walk around now and explore what does self-worth mean to me? What does it mean to be worthy? And I'll bring up how, how I did that this morning uh, in a minute. But first I'm going to mention an image that came to me as I was walking, just before this. And it had to do with um, how can I say that we're all worthy? And that was the question I asked myself. How can I postulate that you are worthy when I don't even know you, uh, if I don't know you. Um, and um, 
And even if I know you, how can I still claim that I know that you're worthy? Well, I'm just going to share this image with you and then allow you to investigate it a little bit because um, there's an, it's the image of the world and of the billions of people here. And if you sort of imagine that you can sort of have an overview of the whole world and all these billion people moving around, they all have their own spot in this world, right? They all have their own, we all have our own space physically in this world. We also have our own space emotionally and spiritually or energetically, if you like. And to me, I can sort of see all the different hues, the different colors, the different vibrations, the different um, timbre, the sounds some people have as well. And we all have different personalities. We all try to sort of fit into a normal, or a lot of people do anyway. We try to find an expression that's normal that we have to fit into, ignoring our own uniqueness, thinking that we need to be normal. And the paradox, of course, is that the norm is not to fit in. The norm is not to be normal because we're all different. And our the way we, uh, and that's the uniqueness. I remember somebody said recently, they say that we're all the same inside. And I think, yeah, well, the value is the same, but we're not the same. We all have emotions, similar emotions. We all have similar uh, rights of living, way of, of, of being born, growing up, and in, uh, eventually uh, moving on past this life or giving, sort of dying. Um, I, I see it as a transition of moving on. And if, um, if you take a puzzle and you take one little piece away, there's gonna be a little gap in that piece. And we all know that when we lose somebody, there's a gap and we have to sort of rebuild that space. So you, no matter where you are, you have a space that is uniquely yours. And if you, if, if you weren't there, it, it, the whole image, the whole world would be different. So your value is to me a given because you're part of the whole picture. We all are, no matter where we are, no matter what we do. But there's one more, um, and maybe a deeper perspective to this that I hold, which has to do, and that I've sort of experienced through working with people more and more and, and uh, seeing people from a different perspective, because I started seeing myself from a different perspective. And it is the fact that we hold this essence that I keep coming back to as well, of being something uniquely larger than what we perceive as on um, our physical world in many ways, uh, divinely um, guided, if you like, or a divine essence, a divine, a drop of the divine, if you like. We have a speck. And this, again, it sort of goes into the same picture of having our own space. Everything we feel and do radiates something to the surroundings and contributes to the moving forward or to the moving backwards or to good and bad that happens in the world, but we all have a space and it's all part of our evolution, our movement. And then there's one more aspect that's coming to me now, and it's the fact that we're just worthy because we are. There's no questioning it. We are living souls, we're living human beings. We are of love, we are love. We are um, beautiful beings moving around, creative beings. We can be destructive in our creation, but we can also be life enhancing in our creation. And um, and I was going th thinking this morning when I w woke up, and sometimes I realize um, waking up in the morning, I always have to have a little time. And usually I sort of to spend some time breathing and, and exploring where I am. And, and this morning I was exploring the, this topic of, of self-worth because I, I knew that was what I was stepping into the first thing in the morning here um, uh, and and I started feeling in, so, so investigating in myself so you can do that lying still as well not just moving um, what is my what is self-worth what is my worth what does that feel like and that was the question I started initially because we know all the words we've heard them self-worth self-esteem we need i want more self-confidence or you should you are worthy you should have more self-esteem or we have i mean 
that's the answer to, to happiness. We, all these concepts and words, but have you related to it? Maybe you know that you don't feel very good. Maybe you don't feel very good. Maybe you feel good, that's fine, beautiful, share. I'd love to hear it. And maybe you don't, share that too, please. We'd, we'd, I'd love a supporting uh, group here. Um, if you don't feel um, that self-worth, if you feel crappy, if you feel awful about yourself or that you're very small or maybe you're oppressed, maybe you're in a society, maybe you're uh, a victim of, of racism or of um, discrimination. And again, last week we talked about healing the victim and coming back to yourself. And this is a deeper step. This is an, um, uh, yeah, one step further from, from that healing. Um, it is it is really connecting to this worth. And so I was lying there and I was exploring. And, and what happens usually when I start questioning and asking, and I've learned to investigate and I've learned to be curious and I've learned to feel and sense and, and feel the energies and what shifts in my body when I ask myself these questions. And I was lying there and I just suddenly felt, ah, yes, that's it. And I don't know if I can explain it, but I'll try. <laughs> It's, um, it was a sense of just mm, being valuable. I can't put it any better way because the words, is, they don't, they hold, they hold the idea, but they don't hold the full feeling. And so it dawned on me that this is maybe the most uh, powerful step that I would advise you to take anyway in, in exploring your own self-esteem and self-worth and it is in investigating it and asking yourself and if you can't, if you're completely stuck in this down spiraling destructive thought pattern and belief system and an oppression or whatever it is, um, then, then connect to other people who can um, open up that little gate so you can start exploring. Uh, are you valuable to somebody? Ask yourself, are you valuable? Does somebody care about you? And even if you don't believe it, try and step a little bit out of yourself. I'm already starting this process of, of connecting to how you can work with this and I'll get into it deeper on Wednesday. Um, but how can you um, try and just sort of step out of yourself a little bit and step into that other person's shoes, somebody that you think or know or who has told you that they, that they love you or miss you or like you or whatever, or just doing something, they've been doing nice things for you for some reason, you don't understand why. Try and step into their shoes and see if you can just shift perspective and, and acknowledge that you have some value to them. Even if you've done something for somebody, that has value to that person. So that's opening up the gate for yourself. I went for a walk with a friend yesterday. She'd been gone for two weeks. And I was talking about this big vision that I'm working on and it, it, it will entail my moving uh, location uh, eventually, probably within a year. And, and she, we've sort of been supporting us through the last few years, through our ups and downs. So first the break, uh, we both had breakups and then we live quite close to each other. We've been for walks, we've talked through everything, we've helped each other. and. And she said to me, oh my God, what's going to happen? I know this is right for you, but oh, it just dawned on me. What am I going to do here? And I thought, yes, she'd been gone for two weeks. I felt, oh my goodness, this woman really matters to me. And I thought about that and I felt, wow, I have value for somebody. Uh, I hold value for somebody and somebody for me as well. And so most of us do. Some of us feel very lonely. So that that I would urge you to seek a support group maybe on Facebook or, or somewhere to, to start to share and, and find one that is supportive, so, uh, a group that you, you feel they, they do share good things and they do help you to acknowledge yourself and they do help you to open that little door so you can start exploring what your worth really is because it is essentially independent of somebody else's view of you but if you have a connection, it can help you. So um, I will again come back to discussing on Wednesday how, or talking how, how you can go into more into depth of, of this 
exploring this worthiness, this value that you hold just by being you. And when you start embracing that, things start to shift in your life. You start to relate to other people differently. You start to make empowering choices. You start to relate to your downfalls in a different way. Because knowing that you can always find back to your own value no matter what happens. And even if you can't do it yourself, when you have this as your ingrained belief, when you're connected to this, you also know when to call in somebody to help you get over that obstacle. So, I mean, all these videos, they're essentially just, we're, I just realized also this morning when I was walking, I'm circling around the same, what should I say, um, epicenter, if you like, of of what I perceive to be a beautiful or powerful truth. And it is the, uh, this, this value that you hold as a human being, but also that you're connected to each other. We're connected to, to the divine, to the higher perspective, to the earth. Um, and essentially it's all just different aspects of being a human being or being, as somebody said beautifully, an infinite soul in a body. So a human being holding a soul in our physical expression here on this earth. So as um, as I finish this uh, little chat today, I hope I see um, a few people have joined. Um, I will just uh, bring you in, into this centering exercise again that I've done a few times before. I'm going to uh, alter it a little bit and it has to do with the three deep breaths that I've, I've uh, practiced a bit before. And usually I um, invite you to, as you breathe in, to imagine that you can pull sort of all this energy that you've left out in the past, in the future, with your thoughts, you know, going into your worries, going to other people, going to uh, events that you've experienced or that you're preparing for or whatever. And just imagine that you, this is a, actually a f energy and it is, I mean, we, we have measured that there is energy around us and I can also see it in, in people. Um, Imagine that you can feel this, that you can pull it in with your breath. Now I'm gonna, and usually I would uh, ask you as you breathe out to bring it down and anchor, anchor yourself into your hips, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. Where after you've breathed, after you inhale, I ask you to hold your breath as you feel yourself in that little moment of holding your breath, sinking into the hips. And as you breathe out, I will invite you to release everything that is old, that you don't need and that is not yours. And we'll do this three times, so bear with me and just follow. And you can close your eyes or you can keep them open. So with the first deep inhale, imagine pulling in all this energy that is yours, gathering it into your center and hold your breath for a moment as you feel yourself sinking into your hips, resting in your hips and as you breathe out, Allow yourself to release anything that your body's holding that you don't need anymore. Anything your energy is holding that's not yours. Breathe in again more of yourself. Anything that's left out there. Pull it in. Pull yourself together. Hold your breath a little as you sink and anchor yourself into your hips. And as you breathe out, let go of everything that you don't need and everything that's not yours. One final breath. Breathe in more of that beautiful essence of yours, that beautiful energy that's all yours into your center. Hold your breath a bit as you sink into your hips, anchoring yourself in your root. And as you breathe out, allow everything you don't want in your energy or in your body, everything obstructing your essence to go. Just go with it, play with it. And then you can bring your attention to your heart center. You can bring your hands there if you like. And imagine that there is a speck of light in there. And this is your burning essence. This is your power, this is your spark. And like a candle, when you look at the flame of a candle, you can see how the light expands and it sort of grady, like gradients out, out past this light. It becomes sort of softer and softer. Now you can imagine that this speck of light in you has the same circles of of hue, of light that expands beyond it. And imagine that you can feel this, you can sense it, you can know it. And even though it gets weaker in, in sort of in intensity as it expands, it's still there and it's 
floating out through your whole body. And you can let it expand as much as you like. And beyond your body, imagine that you can expand this speck of light, this, this radiance out beyond your body until you're surrounded by this beautiful bubble of light around you. Try and see if you can make it as big as an arm's length around you. Above, below, all sides, front and back. And imagine that this, this energy, this light of yours can hold you through the day. And I invite you, because this is a topic of this week and today, is that you set the intention that this energy allows you to connect to your worth, to see or feel where you are worthy, that you are worthy. And that was it for today. And I wish you a beautiful day. Thank you for joining. Many blessings. I will be back on Wednesday, but it'll be a little different because I'll be traveling. So I might just, I'll do a little hello live probably, hopefully, at the airport. And then I'll probably pre-record something that I'll put out afterwards for you to watch if you're interested. And that will be a little bit more of the um, how you can break through, how you can connect to this worth of yours. But even today, I think, um, I think there's some of value here for those of you who want to try it. So please do. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Many blessings. Thank you for being here. Bye-bye.